Are you considering buying and are playing Code Vein, but want to be sure it's worth your time and money, as well as being safe for your mental health first? This is the video for you, friend. I'm the CC and let CC play, and this is an anxious gamer review. Code Vein is a Souls-like game with an anime theme, where you play as a vampiric creature called a Revenant. The setting is post-apocalyptic, with said apocalypse being called the Great Collapse, which shattered a large portion of the world and trapped it behind an impassable wall of miasma. In this new region, a form of government led by a man named Silva, known as the Provisional Government, rose up to protect the few remaining humans from the Revenants, as well as tax and distribute a sort of fruit known as blood beads. The blood beads have a similar composition to human blood, and therefore can keep the revenants fed and prevent them from becoming one of the lost. Which are revenants who became sufficiently thirsty, then frenzied, losing themselves in the process. Revenants are effectively immortal. Each time they die, they will fade away and return to life near a special plant known as thistle that cleanses the miasma in the surrounding area. With miasma being a sort of mist that accelerates the thirst of revenants, requiring them to wear the gas mask as devices. The only thing that can stop this resurrection process is if the heart of the revenant is destroyed, and in that case, they will turn into a pile of ash. The downside to this is every time it happens, the individual loses more and more of their memory. Considering it was also common for people to lose some to a lot of their memories during the transformation process, leaves many with little to no knowledge of their human life. This also leads to a never-ending battle between revenants and the lost. Combined with a growing shortage of blood beads, leaves this world in a lot of turmoil. This is where your stereotypical anime chosen one comes in. You wake up next to a girl who has lost basically all memory same as you, and you learn that your blood and your blood alone can revitalize the blood springs, which are the trees that grow blood beads. Why? Nobody knows, but better get to work saving the world. You also quickly learn that when revenants lose memories, they leave behind vestiges that contain those memories. Once again, you alone, with the help of Io, have the power to pull people into the vestiges so the owner of the memories may reclaim them. Now you must go forth as the Animu Chosen and save the world. Instead of a class system, you use what are called blood coats. You can change them at any time and each one will give you a different set of stats based off your level as well as unique spells and passives. Equipment and gifts have specific stat scaling similar to the system in Dark Souls if you've played that. However, you do not get to pick specific stats to level up. Instead, you simply invest your haze into an overall level. Also, much like Dark Souls, when you die, you drop all your haze on the ground with only one chance to get it back. And of course, all enemies minus bosses respawn when you visit a missile, either through resting or death. One neat thing is that if you kill enough enemies with a specific gift equipped or through using an awake item, you'll inherit it and that will let you use it with any of the other blood codes, assuming they meet the stat requirements. Lastly is the combat. Pretty standard for a Souls-like game, you have to manage your stamina, which you use to dodge and attack. You can also parry block and of course use the gifts I mentioned earlier. Past the active ones, you'll need a core, which you can get by attacking, parrying, or backstabbing. Not much else to say. So with the basics out of the way, does this game contain any potential triggers for the various incarnations of mental illness? Not really. I feel like I've been saying this in a lot of my recent reviews, but it can be quite difficult at times, which I feel could lead to frustration in certain people. So if you are one of those people, please be careful. Also, if you're allergic to uh, something like this, maybe stay back as well. For this video, I think I will just do a single, slightly longer clip so you can see what the gameplay is like. Then I'll come back for my final thoughts. Something we can use?
So, do I recommend Code Vein? It's not a perfect game, but I've still really enjoyed my time with it. Given that a lot of characters have giant anime hair and outfits, there is a lot of clipping. On that same note, at first I kind of thought everything was a smidge cheesy, in that special anime way. But I've been warming up to the characters as I've seen their memories through the vestiges. The mouse and keyboard controls weren't great and I had to spend a bit of time fixing them. I often wonder how developers find it so hard to come up with default mouse and keyboard controls. The default settings had you holding down the right shift key. Are there really people with hands big enough to reach that from the WSDA position? I also think the game needs an optimization patch. Or two as there are some areas that would stutter for no real reason, and the game definitely uses the Dark Souls enemy hiding around a corner way too much. Granted, it has made me very aware. Some areas in the start can also start to feel very samesy with the collapsed skyscraper aesthetic. I think the concept of inheriting gifts is neat, I just wish it was a bit more involved. They are all as simple as kill X enemies. You don't even have to use said gift if you didn't want to. Yet, despite these gripes, I've been having a ton of fun with the game. The character creator feels quite in depth, the combat feels rewarding when you are in the zone. The way the game handles exploration also sat nicely with me. It gives you a mini map with nothing revealed, but you leave a breadcrumb trail wherever you walk, and once you cleanse an area by finding a small corrupted missile, the map is revealed and you can see the areas you might have missed. I was never a big fan of the whole punch every wall in case it's hiding something Dark Souls had you do. I'm more about the combat in games, less about the wandering around checking every square inch. So, while the game doesn't really do much new or groundbreaking, it does a tried and tested formula quite well. I'd definitely say it's a good to great game and worth your time if you're in the market for a full price Souls-like game. If you've got the time, I always appreciate anyone who can check out my other videos, as well as leave me a comment, thumbs up, spudscribe, and last but not least, ting the little bell. I'm going to kick back, relax, and I hope to see you in the next one. CC out.